What's poppin' and welcome back to another episode of Fletcher the Fisherman, guys. Today we're gonna go out and fish with one of my subscribers. His name is AJ, he just reached out to me and asked me if I'd want to come out and fish some of his ponds. He kinda lives up near like Lake Wiley, which is like right outside of Charlotte. And I believe he actually lives on a pond and he said he had something, uh, I think kayaks or something like that uh, that we could actually take out and explore that pond a little bit with. But I'll probably, you know, probably start with the bank fishing uh, and then maybe hop in the kayak if we're having trouble with that. And then also there is, I guess, a golf course that's like in this community. So we might hit a few golf course ponds. And then finally, but not least, you know, he lives on Lake Wiley, like I said. So there's actually like a marina in the community as well that I think we're going to be able to go to and like fish on the docks and stuff like that so I'm actually looking pretty forward to that because I don't fish you know the lakes around here all that often I just don't really get the opportunity to so that should be fun and hopefully the fish are biting but far as the weather and stuff goes guys it is just like it's funky right now it was like a hundred degrees two days ago and now the high today I believe is like 84 or 85 which is a pretty drastic temperature change for you know two days so what I find a lot of the times when that is the case is that you know the fish either do one of two things they either just completely shut down or they get really hungry and start biting everything I think the ponds are you know a little bit more susceptible to the um, the extreme weather changes so hopefully they're not shut down hopefully Hopefully they're you know munching like crazy but we're just gonna have to get out there and figure it out you know we'll see when we get there but here comes a little bit of rain uh, hopefully this goes away but uh, anyways guys last but not least if you want to save yourself 10% on all your lures feel free to use code FTF10 on strikeking.com and you can save yourself 10% across everything on their website and then you can also use code FTF on Luz's website to save yourself free shipping on there and these are two great ways to support me as well if you want to help me out and support the channel. I get a little bit of kickback if y'all use the discount code, so I would really appreciate that as well. But besides that, guys, we have like a 30, 40-ish minute drive out there, so I will catch y'all when I get there. Trying to find this place. Um, oh, here we are. I have found the location. All right, oh, there he is, he's sitting outside. How's it going, man? <laughs> What's his name? Eddie? Hey, bud. Hey, Ed. All right, guys. We're going to go ahead and grab the rods. I think I'm going to start out with this sexy dog a little bit. I'm going to throw that. I also have a sexy frog in here as well. I think we're going to give that a shot. The overcast conditions are looking nice. I'm really liking the look of things. Can't go wrong with the old chatter donk and then finally we got a little soft plastic rods i don't know if i'll keep this little um caffeine shed on there or not but i will probably throw one of these rage bugs on there got a black and blue and then we got this blue crawl if it's dirtier water i'm probably gonna stick and throw this black and blue just because it has that better contrast in the dark water and if it's a little bit clear i'll probably go with the more natural approach with those so let me toss those in the pocket grab the pliers got the tackle on my back already but i think that's about everything let's go ahead and hit the pond is this the juice over here yeah i always start down here and then kind of work my way Crap, I almost yeah, busted it. <laughs> what would I do is I'll work both edges. And you can do whatever you want, but i just tell you what I'm doing. Cool. I'll normally come down here and work both edges. Super shallow there where you kind of see that stick is. Yeah. Oh, I noticed there was a lot of bait. Like the past two days, like all of a sudden there's been a good bit of bait. Like you'll see like when your lure hits, sometimes they just scatter. Just scatter? Yeah. And it's Really it's probably just like days, but I've also seen a lot of more top water action mm -hmm. and, and heard a lot more crashing on the water. Yeah, like, but you might have some bluegills spawning in here. They spawn a few times a year, um, okay. and that can just vary depending on where you are. Yeah. So, you know, there, there could be a little bluegill spawn going on for sure. I'll probably throw a moving bait or something down here and just kind of cover some water. But is that 50 pound braid that you're using? Uh, for for like frogs and stuff i use like 55 or 65. Okay. uh if i can get away with 55 i prefer to throw that for anything else like you know other top waters i usually throw like 30. 
You're like, um, dude, read my description. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I need to put the line size that I, I have on those rods in the description. That would probably help. Okay, guys, this is this is looking good. We're going to start out throwing this sexy dog for a little bit. Try just covering some ground back in this little pocket. He said he's had some decent luck back here. So let's fire this sucker away and see what can happen. Got the hard knock version of the sexy dog on, by the way. A link to all this stuff will be in the description below if you want to check it out. No luck on that first cast. Just send one over here to the far side. A lot of bait splashing and stuff. But honestly, guys, I have a black sexy dog on here right now. I really should be throwing something with more of like a, a white color pattern. Just because with these cloudy conditions, I like to throw white. If it's really sunny, I like to throw black. And that's just because, you know, that bait has more contrast with the sky when the fish are looking up at it in those conditions. So with like a black one, you got that bright sun behind it. So it has a lot of contrast. And with these dark skies, you know, a nice bright white top water has a lot of contrast against that dark sky. So, you know, that's typically what I go with. I just grabbed this because it was already tied on. But if I'm having is any issues catching fish, I might switch colors and see if that makes a difference. Of course, the second we start fishing, the rain starts coming down. Oh, that's typical. <laughs> Literally been sitting here talking for like 30, 45 minutes, not a drop of rain. Make two casts and just starts pouring. Hopefully it doesn't get any heavier than this. Oh crap. <sighs> sailed that one into the into the trees over there that might be a goner yep shoot well there goes uh the first lure of the day we might be able to retrieve that one if we go on the on the kayaks just have to take a mental note of where that landed but it landed pretty deep in the in the trees over there i'm gonna reel this up for right now and pick something else up i do want to get Another sexy dog out of my car, unless I have one in here. Actually, let me see if I got one in here. I might have one in this tackle box. Uh, looks like I do have one. Perfect. I have one right there. So here's one with a white bottom like I was talking about earlier, as far as color preference. So I actually think this should do better than the one I had tied on in here. And when I'm tying on top water lures to braid, Braid has a tendency to slip, especially if you're using like a lower pound test. And right now I have 30 pound braid on, which is what I would consider to be, you know, lighter diameter braid, you know, 55, 65 pound braid, you're not gonna have to worry about this as much. But since it has a tendency to slip, I'll actually go back through this eye twice. So I go weave through it once, and then I'll weave back through it twice. And I usually just tie an improved clinch knot and going through that extra time really helps this line from uh, not slipping much at all. So let me go ahead and tie that sucker on here and get her back in the water. I've got it rigged back up, but I do actually want to switch baits for a minute, see if I can convince something to come up and bite. So we're going to switch over to the Thunder Cricket. And let me go ahead and walk down here and give this thing a toss. There's one. First fish of the day. Got it on the Thunder Cricket. <laughs> Ate it almost as soon as it went in the water right there. That's awesome. Let's go. She ain't no giant, but she seems like a healthy little large jaw. Come on in, darling. About a pound or so. Let's go ahead and pluck that out of there. But that is our first fish of the day, guys. A solid like one pounder. She looks healthy though. Nice and chunky. Nice and meaty. Hopefully the uh, the bigger ones that we should hopefully catch a day are looking like this as far as healthiness goes. And if that's the case, they should be nice and filled out. That's a good one to start the day out on. Let's pick this sucker back up. Keep on fishing back here. Seems like there are a few fish hanging back in this pocket. Oh. 
got thumped again. Next cast. Hey, there you go. Nice one. What kind of creature bait? Some crawl. Just a little crawl. Um. Yeah, just a little crawl type bait. Yeah, I think it's called like a bull hog or something like that. Interesting. Yeah, I've had a good success with it. I think what happens is they just uh, those little tentacles. They just really like. Yeah, just. <laughs> <a lot>. so <laughs> I've had a lot of success with the. Uh, there you go. Well, guys, I think I'm going to try to walk around the pond a little bit. We're going to head this way, grab the stuff. AJ just caught a nice one on the crawl. So there is a chance I might switch over to throwing some soft plastics here in a little bit. If he continues to produce them on that, I figured that would probably be a, a pretty good option day. I just wanted to try some moving baits first, see if I could get them on that, especially top water. If I can get a top water bite going, you know, that would be freaking awesome. But we're just gonna have to see what they're willing to buy today. This looks like a decent spot to put the rods. Let me slide my way down here. Pull this back out. See what's chomping back in this corner. Oh, snag. First cast. I think we can uh, get this one out though. It's gonna be a high effort though. <laughs> No luck with the Thunder Cricket right here. Might sit down and switch things up here a little bit. Might switch over to a little bit of bottom fishing. Uh, let's see what we got in the old tackle box. Hopefully I don't have to run back to the car to get what I need. I think I have weights and hooks in this little box. There is a weight. There's a hook. Do I have bullet weight stoppers? I don't need them, but they would be nice to have. It looks like I got some. There we go. That's all I need out of there. Got the hook and stuff tied on, so it's time to pop into my little rage bugs right here. And this is the blue crawl color, in case y'all were wondering. Decided to go with this instead of the dark color, just because this water isn't like super stained. Uh, I don't know what it kind of looks like on the camera right now, but there's definitely some water clarity if you're like staring like right into it. There's like a, I guess a darker stain to it, but the water itself is actually kind of clear. So I think the more natural presentation is good to be the move here. Okay, looks like we're good to go. Let me uh, let me work over here. I'm gonna walk around to this side and try to toss it around in the corner for a second. Well, I didn't really have any luck over in that corner. So I'm gonna try to take this little kayak out to fish this far side where we have some nice like lay downs and overhangs and all that good stuff. It's just looking extra fishy over there. AJ said I could take this out and he's had some good luck over on that side. So I figured I'd go ahead and give it a shot. I have not fished out of a kayak in quite some time. So this should be interesting. Um, let's see, I'm trying to push off of here. Hopefully this camera angle isn't too bad. I know a lot of people fish use like a, a head mount when they're fishing out of a kayak. But I think the chest mount should do for today. Y'all just gonna have to look at these beautiful white lightning thighs for a few minutes while we try to catch these fish. So I've actually been thinking about possibly trying to get a kayak sometime soon. Is that something y'all would be interested in seeing me do? Some kayak fishing? There's just a few places where I just can't quite get the twin troller into that I could definitely get a kayak into that I know of that I think would be fun to go out and do some fishing in and just you know it's just fun to mix things up do things that are a little bit different fishing out of a kayak is fun in its own way um, in a lot of ways so I definitely want to try to get a little bit more into it because it's just not something I've done a whole lot of Try over next to this pipe right here. I might have one. Oh, nope. False alarm. I just felt a little spongy there. Got 
Bye bye. Oh, dang. Well, we didn't end up having any more luck in that pond, so I'd run back to the truck to grab a little bit of extra tackle really quick. We're taking his golf cart. There's some like golf course ponds that are close by that I think we're gonna go try to hit for a little bit. And then we might actually go over to like a little marina or something over here on the lake and try targeting some stuff around there if that doesn't go to plan. But I think these golf course ponds should do the trick. Just wanna bring a little bit of extra tackle with me. All right, I think we're good. Yeah, you put your and, and the uh, the Bitcoin uh, Bitcoin cart. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, we just rolled up to this dock over here on Lake Wiley. That's kind of borders the neighborhood. We're gonna try our luck in here, see if we can find some big lake fish on this marina. Flipping some of these little dock areas. There's one. Yeah. Oh, got one up underneath the dock. <laughs> Let's go. On the crawl. Thumped it. And it's a little chunk, too. That's a healthy fish. Heck yeah. Got ourselves a nice large jaw. Looks about like a two pounder or so. Nothing to, to write home about, but she will do the trick. Definitely best one so far today out of the two that we've caught. There was uh, quite a bit of time lag between this fish and that first one we caught. We've been fishing all over the place. We tried some golf course ponds. I fished, you know, that first pond for a good bit and just absolutely nothing after that first one. But we finally are back on the board. It seems like we might be onto something flipping these docks. It only took me a few minutes to finally hook up with one, but that's a nice fish. Let's go ahead and get her back in. Thank you, mom. Whew. <laughs> There she goes. Whew, thank gosh, guys. That was a ordeal trying to get a second fish today. We have been at it. These fish have been just kind of shut down, bunkered down because of this like funky weather we've had. It was like 99 degrees and it dropped down into like, you know, the mid 80s in the span of like a day or two. And the weather system came in, a bunch of rain, all this good stuff. And these pond fish will just either do one of two things when you have extreme changes. They either will go like crazy and start biting everything, or they will just completely shut down. So, you know, the pond fishing just seemed to be completely shut down. They weren't very interested in much. So we decided to come over to the lake. Lakes, I just don't think get as impacted by drastic weather changes like a little small body of water like a pond does. So hopefully the fish in here are a little bit more willing to bite. We're rigged back up though. Let's keep on flipping these docks. Yo, oh, there's one. Oh, God, we're stuck in the trolling motor. Oh, it cut off. Dang it. Ah. Oh, that was another one about the same size. I got all tangled up in this stuff. We're, uh, we're fishing in close quarters here. We're just dive bombing these guys from up on the dock. And if I hook one, unfortunately, I do not have a, a lot of room to work with. And he started running. My line wrapped around the back end of that trolley motor, and I could not get him off of it in time, unfortunately. But that is two fish off the same dock. We're getting close to the end, though. But, you know, there's, I don't know, seven or eight more docks that we can walk out and fish on. So, you know, two fish a dock, I'll take that. I'll take that. Maybe we get one more before we uh, get out of here. On to the second dock. We're going to try getting up in these little holes in here. Same little shin dig. Literally just going to drop it straight down, jig it up and down a little bit wait for a thump and, you know, set the hook and, and try to hold on and get them out of these tiny holes. 
Are you get one? Yeah. Nice. Decent one? It seems like he's tugging you pretty good. Are you stuck? He's stuck. Oh. oh. That seemed like a good fish. It was a good fish. You think that was above two or three? It felt heavy, but then it also got caught in the... On the, on the metal? In the metal, yeah. Dang. Well, no luck on dock number two. Gonna keep on moving down this little marina line, try all these docks one at a time. Dock number three coming up. <laughs> We're just on a flipping mission today. There's a bite. Oh, picked it up and dropped it. One has it. There we go. There we go. There's another bass. The last slot of the dock. Let's go. <laughs> oh, thanks, bud. You were a cheeky little guy. You just started running with it. I didn't even feel you bite it. I just saw that line moving. And sure enough, there was a nice little arch jaw on there. He wanted to crawl. Thanks for the munch, bud. Well, today ended up being a pretty fun day. Hopefully y'all enjoyed that. I'll definitely have to link up with AJ again when we have some better weather conditions where we can really try to pick apart the ponds that we fished today. You know, there was a lot that I didn't even put in the video as far as the golf course stuff goes. But hopefully y'all enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you all drop a like and subscribe. But as always, guys, bassin' is a passion. Peace.